Hi guys and welcome to another IBM ODM technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about looking up some reference data from within a rule. I was recently posed a puzzle which was uh, imagine we had a, an electric utility company and part of the rule was that uh, the electric utility company was looking to determine whether or not they could disconnect someone's electric supply let's say someone hadn't been paying now in state law uh, some laws require that if the weather forecast for the next few days is going to be exceptionally high or exceptionally low then uh, quite sensibly we are not allowed to disconnect the electric Electric supply. So this involves a decision. Let's say the decision was can we perform the electric disconnection? This involves reference to data which is not part of the native decision. Uh, we could, in principle, pass in tomorrow's weather forecast or today's weather forecast into the decision operation request. But uh, that then puts the onus on the caller to determine the weather forecast for tomorrow. What we would rather do is have the rule uh, include some kind of determination of what is the weather forecast for tomorrow. So we might, from a business rule perspective, want to, inc want to write a rule that looks something like this. If the high, meaning the high temperature, is more than 80 degrees, then set the approval to be false. But uh, if we're going to pass in, or, or rather, where do we get the high temperature from? Now, we could pass in to the decision operation, tomorrow's weather forecast, but is there an alternative solution to this? And one answer is to have the rule execution server itself determine what the weather forecast is for tomorrow and then expose that uh, those values, the high and the low temperature, as properties within the rule uh, that can be then uh, reasoned upon. So uh, we've got services out there. Uh, IBM, for example, owns the weather company, which owns Weather Underground. And Weather Underground exposes an API, which can be called in order to do a weather forecast lookup. So this would then say that if we could embed in our rules a call to an external service provider to look up the weather details, we wouldn't have to pass that in as a calling in parameter when we perform the operation. So the way we do that, the way we achieve that in the ODM product is to write ourselves a Java class. And that Java class would, for example, own the request to make a service call to a service provider and, for example, look up the weather forecast. So here we're making a REST request from within our Java code, and that REST request is using the JAX-RS, the uh, 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 REST services APIs. So that, uh, uh, that JAX-RS call is being made to the weather underground, passing in a request to get the current uh, weather forecast for the area involved. We then parse the response JSON document that comes back from that request and we retrieve the high and the low temperature. So this Java class allows us to parse our data and then make it available. Now the data is uh, contained within high and low values as statics within the Java class and uh, because making a REST request is rather expensive, I've included here uh, a very simple caching mechanism which allows us to cache the last requested data for a configurable period. So when a request to get the high temperature or the low temperature is made, we call this update function. This update function determines whether or not we have stale data. If we do have stale data, we make the REST request and then remember the last time we got the data so we don't have to make the rest request again until our stale interval passes. So we write this Java class and we can then execute the ODM development tools to build a business object model from that uh, class and we end up with a bomb environment which has uh, properties on it called get high and get low. And if we drill into those, that then gives us the concepts of the high and the low. 
which we can then use in our rules in order to determine whether or not we have the, the correct temperature. So as I sit here in Texas, tomorrow's uh, forecast is for a very pleasant 78 degrees in February. Isn't that wonderful? 78 degrees. And right now the rule says if the high is more than 80, then set the approval to be false. Now I've already deployed this solution out to the environment. So if we run a request, I run a request, we get a response back. And the response says uh, that the request is approved. Why would it be approved? Tomorrow's temperature is a high of 78. It's not over 80 degrees, so we're good. And if we look at my log here, we see at 11.58, that's just now, we made a call and uh, we got back a forecast of 78 degrees. If I run this request again, let me look for the right thing. If I run this request again, we get back an immediate response that uh, once again, that the uh, uh, decision is approved. We don't see any more calls to the REST service because we're using our cached values. Now let's change my rule. Let's go into decision center and let's change the rule so that it is now uh, not seven, not 80 degrees, but it is instead, let's say a high of 75. We will not allow a disconnect uh, uh, if the temperature is going to be higher than 75 degrees, I make the change to my rule. I go back to my uh, main console of Decision Center. I deploy my rule out to my rule execution server. The rule is being deployed. The rule has been deployed. And if I rerun the request, we now get back an approval of false. Why is the approval to disconnect false? Because the weather forecast for tomorrow is 78 degrees, which is more than 75 degrees, and we are thus no longer allowed to perform a disconnection. So the core notion here is a mixture of Java code which is performing a REST request in order to look up external data. That REST data is cached locally, so we don't have to look it up, and uh, we don't have to look it up for every request. By having written this in Java and then exposed it as a business object model, we can then provide the business users extra vocabulary in their rule writing to talk about high temperatures and low temperatures, and then the business pair person does not have to know the mechanical GARP of how the high temperature or the low temperature is defined, but can instead focus on rules. So for example, if the high is more than 80 or the low is less than, I don't know, let's make up a number, 35, then set the approval to be false. So now we have exposed this rule, which a business person can then offer an update without having imbued that in the GORP of technical code. I hope you found something useful in this presentation, and I look forward to making more in the future. Thanks, guys, and bye-bye.